Hi, and welcome to the final episode of Season 9 of ECCB Connects. On this episode, we'll speak with Sybil Welch, chairperson of the ECCB FinTech Working Group, about the EC Digital Currency Pilot Project. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Credit Union Movement of Dominica congratulates the ECCB on its quest to pilot the world's first digital currency to be issued by a central bank. This a visionary stride augurs well for the creation and facilitation of innovative financial solutions that is needed in this current digital age. It is our expectation that the digital version of our very stable EC currency will not only induce seamless transfers between our members, merchants and other institutions, but that these efforts will go a long way in assisting the region to mitigate against the loss of corresponding banking relationships. We applaud the ECCB's vision and foresight in enhancing economic growth, resilience and financial inclusion within the region. And for this, the movement of Dominica looks forward to partnering with the ECCB and will continue to seek synergies with the strategic ambitions of the ECCB as outlined in its 2017-2021 strategic plan. The pilot project of the ECCB digital currency is a long-awaited innovative way that I am sure will be beneficial to both public and the business community in the OECS. Sybil, welcome to ECCB Connects. Thank you, Karina. It's my pleasure. The ECCB recently launched its digital EC currency pilot project, which will see the ECCB issuing a digital version of the EC dollar. Tell us, what exactly is a digital currency? A digital currency, as the name suggests, is not something that you can feel and touch, but it is actually something that would provide the same sort of value that you would get in a physical construct. So the digital EC currency that is part of the pilot project, it will be a secure, sovereign, so we're talking about legal tender, this is not play money, um, it will be frictionless, which means a lot of the sort of obstacles and high costs that one associates with some of our current payment constructs uh, for the debit cards or for wire transfers or even the ability to move money across the waters. Then you have to pay shipping in the physical realm. The digital will make it frictionless in that sense. It will be legal tender and it will be facilitated via digital wallets. That digital wallet is really an application that is on your smart device. And you know we have all of these apps that we download. Well, consider the similar issue. That application will store the private and public keys, and I'm getting a little technical, but just to say that these allow for your financial assets to move, to facilitate payments, to facilitate transfers, to be able to check the balances on that digital um, application, as well as to do any other approved um, activities within the digital ecosystem for the pilot project. So it's sovereign, easy currency in a digital form. Sybil, why the project at this time? Why has the ECCB chosen now to embark on such an undertaking? Well, it comes on the heels of the bank's five-year strategic plan, 2017 to 2021. And that strategic plan is embedded in the issue of transformation, transformation of the ECCU economy. And when you look at two of the goals, it speaks about a strong, resilient, diversified financial system. And part of building resilience is really to have what the technical term is redundancy, say options. So that if you have more than one payment system construct, if one is not facilitating the needs of one target group, you have choices. So we needed to look at how do we have options to drive business growth, to drive competitiveness, to drive resilience, and to drive financial inclusion. All of these things ask us, what are we doing as an institution and as a region? And then we get to our goal, um, our other goal, goal four of the strategic plan that speaks about driving economic growth and development. 
of the member territories. And that is also not only in the strategic plan, but in the ECCB Agreement Act of 1983. It mandates the bank not only to look at money and credit and monetary stability and financial stability, but recognizing that there is um, a whole network or interplay between stability, growth and development. So we're really looking at the problems and saying, how can we find innovative solutions? And in this era of technology, we have looked to technology for a solution. Hence, the digital currency pilot project. So you spoke about transformation and the ECCB's thrust to drive economic growth and how this is going to help small businesses, medium businesses and the consumers. This is something that the people can look forward to. Certainly. And when we think about it, you know, we always ask the question, what is in it for me? So here's the consumer asking that question. Here's the merchant. Here's the financial institution. Here's the household. All of these uh, um, customer segments are asking. And what we can talk about from the household perspective, we can say, listen, you are going to have a payment system that is easy to use. You are able to track your financial activities so you can have a digital record. That goes into budgeting and, and managing your finances and being able to, when you go to an institution for credit and they ask about what are your transactions, you have something that you can download that looks so professional and organized. Yes. For the merchants, they're going to get operational efficiencies. Think about the times um, businesses stay behind after working hours to reconcile or count up all the cash mm. and count up all the checks and reconcile them. This now is seamless because now everything is online, everything is being aggregated online, and then you have that record. You're able then to see seamlessly what's going on. It also allows for business expansion. If you're a merchant, you tend sometimes, unless you have an online presence, some, some infrastructure online to facilitate getting your credit card payments or you, the wire transfers course that you might have to engage in, this allows you now to be able to engage customers outside of your country but within the eight member territories of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union mm -hmm. and allow for them and you to transact by you sending the goods and they sending the money from their wallet to your wallet. When you think about it for financial institutions, there's also a benefit. Whether you're a commercial bank or a credit union, first of all, if people's lives are being enriched, they're finding new ways to create wealth, it's going to redound to the benefit of the financial institutions. Because this is a payments construct, but it is not a replacement for savings. So their earnings, they will know how much I want to put in my liquid commitments. That is your regular cash flow transactions. How much do I want to put in my savings? And then not only just savings, but it also be business expansion. The more businesses expand, is the more they would rely on the financial institutions for credit. Sybil, so how does the digital currency actually get into the hands of the people? How does it get into the financial sphere? The EC currency currently goes through financial institutions. So the channel is ECCB issues currency to financial institutions. Financial institutions now make sure it's accessible to the public. And so that will be a similar construct that we'll be following. Um, so credit unions, commercial banks, approved financial institutions will be able, therefore, to access the digital currency from the ECCB. And they will be the distribution channels to the public. And that's really that seamless way of persons already have their own familiarity with their personal financial institution. And so we maintain that relationship. There are other ways too that they can access it. Approved digital wallet service providers who are not financial institutions, but who are providing the ability for persons to cash in their EC physical currency and cash out on their smart device, their digital EC currency. Let's move now to the pilot itself. Tell us more, how, how will this be rolled out? Well, the pilot is for 18 months and the first 12 months, so we can imagine from March to February next year, we are in the development stage. We will be doing a lot of consultations with the public, with those customer segments, financial institutions, merchants, households, all of these customers 
will really influence the development of the solution because it's a solution for customers. And so they have to be part and parcel in the design and implementation of the solution. And so we'll be doing that and interviews like these are the start of the sensitization process. And then we go into live deployment where we will have real people, real merchants, real financial institutions, real money, real digital EC currency being issued and circulated so it can transact buying real goods and services. Sibyl, you, you spoke about the rollout of the project. Um, will all of the countries of the ECCU region be involved in this? All will be involved, but there are various stages of involvement. So in the sensitization, in the awareness, in making sure we get the feedback, we will be in all countries. In relation to the pilot, we will be in select countries. And the reason is it's a pilot. And so you want to keep it as manageable as possible to allow for that active engagement. And so part of the whole pilot issue is to make sure that you keep it manageable, but the information out of the pilot will be disseminated to all member countries. So whether you are directly involved or not, you will still feel the energy of this digital currency that is on its way to you. If I'm a business owner, if I'm an individual, how do I become part of this action? We will be doing a call going around the islands, having sensitization sessions, talking to persons. When we're doing the testing, we're going to have select groups from those persons to then say, listen, tell us how this digital wallet application is working for you, how it feels when you press or when you do whatever um, activity. Is it really meeting how you would relate to um, technology? Is it seamless? Is it easy? Is it giving you that experience, you know, that user experience that will make you want to keep using it? Those are the sorts of um, information that will help to ensure that what we end up with is a product that is at the top level of design. So we talk about design by consultation. Design is important to the success. User experience is important to the success. How do we know that? How do we get that information? How do we get that feedback? By going to the people. And that's really what it's all about. Their feedback are gifts to make sure that the project is a success. Sybil, thanks for speaking with us today on ECCB Connects. It's been my pleasure and I look forward to engaging ECCB Connects to get out to the people of the region to talk about their currency now coming in digital form. I would like to say that I definitely endorse the move towards a digital currency by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. I believe that our region needs to make more use and take more opportunity of what digital technology affords us. And the bank in moving in this direction, I believe. The bank in making this move certainly is demonstrating that it has confidence in technology and in the people of the region to subscribe to this technology as we move forward. This brings us to the end of this episode and season nine of ECCB Connects. While we're on break, be sure to stay connected with us via Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Join us in May for new and exciting episodes when we'll share with you who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. Thanks for watching.